Hey Guru Nation, really quick uh, intro I want to do for this video. So this is going to be taken from the clinical scoop. I want you guys to all go, the link is underneath, the first link underneath here to the clinical scoop YouTube channel uh, where we do these kind of things every week actually. We bring on different experts, we talk about different medical conditions, then we look at studies. We actually go live on clinicaltrials.gov and either look at study results or what we did in this particular video, which I'm going to show you, is studies that are ongoing or about to start recruiting sites and about to start recruiting subjects. So for those of you interested in the business development of these things, or even career development for that matter, you can actually find, I think, I hope, some practical aspects for how you can actually use clinicaltrials.gov. And if you're collaborating with a physician, like we were in this video with Dr. Al Jazeera uh, how you can ask them and kind of pick their brain about what they think about the science behind the study, uh, about the drug, about the investigational product, and then I break it down as to what's the likelihood of us as a site actually getting the study, and then what's the, what's the feasibility for us to actually do this kind of study. So we kind of brainstorm live, and this is what we do on the Clinical Scoop every week. We also have a podcast of the same name, so go check it out, The Clinical Scoop and hopefully you take something away from this video because I want to show you that clinicaltrials.gov is actually really a really good tool for business development and career development as I hope you'll see here. And also maybe you'll learn a few things about Alzheimer's studies which is what we happen to have covered this week but we've covered in the past oncology, we've covered COVID, we're going to be covering all kinds of stuff. We're just getting started with Clinical Scoop so hopefully you enjoy this one. Let me know what you think. Take care. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Clinical Scoop. I'm Dan Sfera. I've got Dr. Al Jazeera on. I've got Monica Quitiva on. And we are going to be talking about four studies right now. And I'm going to share my screen. So let me pull up my screen here. Hopefully I'm able to do it. Let's see. Desktop one. Let's see. Tell me if you guys can see my screen. I can't. Not yet. Hmm? Share. Okay, here we go. So now we're sharing it. So we got four studies, okay? We've got an Alzheimer's study. We've got a, another Alzheimer's. All, all Alzheimer's. Oh, all Alzheimer's. This mm -hmm. is unbelievable. We're going to have a, a busy time talking about this stuff. Yeah. Dr. Al, it's going to be interesting uh, to get your take on this as an oncologist. But uh, you definitely have more knowledge yeah. than we do on this. No, I, I, I think that the, the, the main the main scoop about it is like what we're gonna do about it in regard of the clinical trial of the validity of it and uh, how we can work on on on, on these uh, trials to see how. So which one are you gonna start with? Dan? So the first one, uh, SEMA 4D blockade. Safety and brain metabolic. So, Monica, you pick these. Why did you pick these ones? Yeah. This one so this one uh, is that that this one is kind of new on the um, clinical trials that go up, and it's actually not yet recruiting. So I pick it because it could be an opportunity for the uh, principal investigators out there that have interest in this kind of studies or for the potential doctors that have interest in Alzheimer's to see that even though that, uh, especially this kind of uh, therapeutic area, I mean, not therapeutic area, this condition is specific, have been having a lot of challenges uh, with the COVID. They still have studies starting uh, now. So sponsor is Vaxinex and the drug Pepinimab. And it's a phase one and phase two. So this is a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled, parallel group, uh, interventional. Okay, let's see how many. 60 participants. Yeah. And it's starting. Okay, so these are new studies. So yeah, this is a new one that's going to start. Let's see. First thing I always look for is can I contact somebody from the study? Yes. So let me go Yes, down. you can. I found. Ah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so John Lennon, okay. They'll be hearing from us soon. And they're in San Diego. So let's yeah. look at the Dr. Al. What do you think about this? Uh, 
type of drug? Do you know something about this one? Uh, they try to do experimental study on this uh, um, humanized uh, immunoglobulin G4 monoclonal antibodies and uh, different dosing for the patient who Alzheimer. The main primary interest of the study is to see uh, adverse effects of the medication. So most probably this is an, uh, an early study. It's a new, brand new medication that they're trying to see if it is effective. And then uh, the secondary outcome measurement is the effect of the brain metabolism in uh, Alzheimer uh, patient and the uh, assessment for uh, Alzheimer patients with uh, cognitive scaling uh, for them. Clinical dementia rating, and uh, but the main goal, which is the primary uh, outcome of the study, is the uh, effect of this uh, immunoglobulin uh, G4 monoclonal antibody on uh, treatment. Treatment uh, emergent adverse events. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then we have the include the primary outcome, secondary outcome. Uh, effects on brain metabolism. And exactly. This is kind of, uh... They have common scale. These are all the common scales. The ADAS COG for Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. clinical dementia rating, mini mental mm -hmm. uh, activities of daily living. I've actually done most of these uh, as a rater before. I think Monica too. Alzheimer's, yeah. uh -huh. NPI. So these are time consuming rating scales. Uh, let's see, is there a, a MRI on this as well? Um, I, I, uh, no, but I, I think they don't have. Uh, yeah, so... so I think they're, they're, they're going to measure the blood for uh, interleukin uh, and tumor necrosis factor and T-cell okay. and B-cell quantitative flow psychometry. Also checking the CSF for... Uh, Neuroinflammatory, uh, neuroinflammatory uh, light chain uh, on these patients. Okay. Interesting. Let's see the other outcome measure. Oh, they have a lumbar puncture. Yeah. CSF. Mm -hmm. um, so these are tough for patients to. These are tough to do in a study. Uh, it's very painful and. Usually, patients refuse to get this done, even in Alzheimer's. Uh, what are your experiences with this, Doctor Al, as far as lumbar punctures? You know, I've, I've been uh, I've been doing study for us, like as with a bone marrow biopsy for some patients, which is like almost similar as lumbar puncture, but a little bit harsher, a little bit. And the patient who wants to be in the study just to try this new medication, but doesn't want to be does not want to receive this uh, kind of uh, procedures, I will put them under anesthesia. I will uh, do for them low, uh, uh, conscious sedation and will do for them the procedure. This is they don't have to feel or suffer through the procedure itself. So this is one option that I can do, but I don't think it's being done for lumbar puncture. We can give them sedation in the hospital when I want to do for CNS lymphoma, CSF uh, 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 studies. That's what we do is uh, give them some sedatives uh, prior to the study, uh, prior to doing the lumbar puncture, which can help in reducing the anxiety and uh, feeling the procedure that's been done. It includes also the PET scan. Yeah, I see it. So inclusion. Yeah, so they have, here's the inclusion criteria, okay, informed consent, that's for every study. Uh, a reliable, so this is a common thing for Alzheimer's, is a, um, a partner for the patient. So they also call it a caregiver. It could be a family member or somebody who has face-to-face uh, -face contact at least three days a week minimum uh, with the patient because they're going to be asking them, this is Alzheimer's, so it's obviously some cognitive declines. And so they're going to be asking a lot of the questions to the caregiver as well. Uh, 55 to 85, they need to have a, uh, where is it here, documented PET scan, amyloid PET scan, prior to the screening visit and determined as positive. And then a documented positive CSF result. Uh, and so if documentation is not available, 
of either of these, then they're going to have to do it uh, at screening. Okay, so they're trying to avoid having to do it if they already have a PET scan uh, or a CSF. Uh, but oftentimes they don't, in my experiences, so you're going to have to get this done at screening. Uh, there's a lot of screen failure rates also in um, Alzheimer's because of the PET scan oftentimes doesn't have positive amyloid. Uh, so like they have like mild to moderate Alzheimer's and sometimes it's early, early onset. They don't have enough amyloids to qualify. Um, uh, here they need to have evidence of cognitive impairment based on history and neuropsychological testing. So if they qualify for this part, then they're probably going to have the amyloid, uh, there mild cognitive impairment. And then you're going to have a CDR score of uh, 0 0.5 to 1.0 and an MMSC, MMSC score of uh, greater than 22, which is kind of a, a moderate, moderate, I think, um, because mild to moderate is 16 to 22, I believe. So yeah, I mean, you're going to get, you're probably going to screen fail a lot of mild to moderate cases of Alzheimer's. Uh, so I expect a 50% screen fail ratio from my experiences with this. So if you're an investigator looking to take on this study, you got to make sure you negotiate in your budget uh, at least a one-to-one -one screen fail reimbursement. But you can always ask. The thing about these things is you can always ask the sponsor, what is your expected screen fail rate? They'll tell you. Maybe it's higher than 50. I've had some studies where the screen fail rate, I mean, me and Monica worked on them, is 90. 90%. Uh, yeah. But regularly, this, the this, uh, budget for this kind of studies are good, too. <laughs> so it kind of yeah. compensates the, the amount of for, work. Especially for a phase two. Uh, phase one and phase two is what I saw here. So this is a good study. They're only looking, let's see what they have. They're starting in September. They only have a few locations, but they only need, let's see how many patients 60. they need. 60. 60. Mm -hmm. So they think they already have the sites they need for, okay, they have Georgetown, which is big. P, uh, but this site in San Diego is big. They're a private site, but they're big. Georgetown is huge. Uh, brain, brain Matters Research, I don't know about them, but they sound big. Neuropsychiatric Research Center. So, yeah, it looks like they have Indiana University, University of Kansas, Johns Hopkins, uh, Columbia. They have a lot of sites already. So they think from these sites they can get 60 patients. And maybe they can. But it doesn't hurt to ask if you're not in one of these locations. Like maybe you're in uh, Los Angeles. You know, they'd probably give you the opportunity. If you're in San Diego, probably not. You're competing now with one of their sites. Uh, so if you're not in one of these areas and you think you have a good chance of uh, contributing patients, you might want to reach out to John and Alicia. And it's conveniently, their email and their phone numbers are here. Conveniently for you, not so much for them. Uh, <laughs> Okay, next study. What do you, why is this one uh, interesting, Monica? Why you pulled this one off? Because we participated on a, a light release study that it was kind of be, before this one, uh, which it was observational. And I think they were kind of accruing patients for this study or, or taking a look and see if it was, um, if they will have enough population to get into this study. This is also a new study. Uh, it started on June 18, 2020. So I'm thinking they are going to probably need more sites too. And like you highlight there, uh, they have five, they are looking for 500 uh, participants. However, they have, well, for this, they have a lot of sites. Uh, but I mean, I don't know. I'm, th I'm thinking that they. One. You have to click for the study locations. So, see, this is what uh, actually this is good. Usually, Eli Lilly. This is Eli Lilly. Usually, yeah. Eli Lilly. I don't know if they change this now, but I used to be on clinicaltrials.gov all the time looking for studies. So, Eli Lilly used to protect these 
investigators like information because they don't want a rival drug company to take their PIs. So, but now they're keeping them. So look, you can contact, if you want to start a clinic or you're an Alzheimer doctor, you're, you're a psychiatrist doing also, or want to do Alzheimer's study. Look how many doctors phone numbers you have. Okay. It tells you who the PI is. Let's say you're in Phoenix. Okay. You get the phone number to the clinic, the PI name. You can call colleague to colleague and say, Hey, I see you're doing the study. I'm interested. These are the kind of studies I'm doing. I'm in Irvine, you're in Phoenix, so we don't compete. Maybe we can share study leads. Maybe you can tell me who I need to contact for this study. Because Eli Lilly, and they have a lot of sites. Look how 86. much networking opportunity. Look how all this networking you can do. You can spend the whole day tomorrow doing just calling people from here. Okay, so let's go all the way to... You see, this is what Eli Lilly does. Unlike the other study, which was a small study let me show you for example this is business development i used to do dr al now monica does this a lot but i used to do this like non-stop okay see this small company they have the director's phone number and email big company eli Lilly has nothing okay if you call this number it takes you to a mailbox you're not going to get anywhere it's for meant to be for patients so this is the problem with the big sponsors the only way you can try to find who this sponsor is, is you can use a tool like Zymewire. But Eli Lilly is so big, they're probably doing like 100 Alzheimer's studies. You're not going to get a hold of whoever's doing this one. So the best thing I would do is I would it's call... One of these principal investigators. Yeah, like I would... I'm in California, so I would ignore California, but I would call Connecticut. And uh, maybe not, maybe not Yale, maybe not Yale. They wouldn't help me, but like, let's, yeah, let's find like uh, somebody, somebody I think is like me, MD but in Florida. MD Clinical looks good because it looks like somebody small, like they're willing to talk to me. So I would call and ask for Beth, you know, Dr. Safirstein, and say, hey, you know, Dr. Safirstein, we have a similar last name. You know, I also want to have a <laughs> similar study, similar study to you. And this is how you network, you know, but I mean, that's how you do it, guys. But for this study, what do you guys think about this? Like, what do you think about the drug or, you know, what what do you think about these things? I, I think it's a brand new indication that they're trying to, because there is a PK studies, a PK measurement here on the on one of the requirements for the study, sorry. Okay, and there is the, the main thing is to see if there's any improvement in the clinical dementia rating scale for the patient. Uh, what kind of medication exactly it is, what kind of a blocker or enhancement, I'm not sure. Uh, John on a map, yeah, IV, given a- uh, I think intravenous, IV. yeah. Yeah, John on a map. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's as, see. Let's see. Let's uh, go. No, it, it, it sounds as if it is an antibody. MAB at the end sounds as an antibody. Okay. Yeah. I'll summarize. Okay, humanized IgG monoclonal antibody. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Monoclonal antibody. Yep. yep. Yeah. When you have MAB at the end of the name, that means sound for an antibody. Okay. But then So that's interesting. Let's see what the inclusion. So CDR, this is if you're going to be doing Alzheimer's, this is like the gold standard of rating Alzheimer's. Uh, MMSC, primary CDR. Let's see what the eligibility criteria. MMSC score of 20 to 28. So in the other one, we had an MMSC score of uh, greater than 22. So you can get a little bit more mild uh, here in this study. And let's see if they have lumbar puncture. Because those are usually, in my experiences, the patients don't want to do the study if that's mandatory. <laughs> and here it doesn't say anything about this. So. No. And the other one had, you know, this the inclusion, exclusion. It, it has an MRI, MRI and, and, uh, uh, and PET scan. Yeah, PET scan. And, have PET scan and... and this fluoride, right? They, this is, uh, 
You know, we've actually, Dr. Al, we've had yeah. a study with this before mm -hmm. uh, where they inject fluoride before the PET scan and patients were worried that that's going to cause damage to their, is there any truth to this? No. No? No. No, I, I think the PET scan, this is all for radioactive uh, fluorinated medication. Okay, so it is, all of it is the same now. Not going to be changing, but that's how it is, like, because they label it and they injected the... Okay. Uh, so, yeah, this would be actually a really good study to do if you're... This is, seems like, I mean, they need a lot of patients, so they're, they're estimating the enrollment, com <clears throat> the enrollment completion until 2023. Well, so, you have a long time. Even if these sponsors... You, let's say you contact... Like I said, Dr. Safrastein here, and she told me, yeah, Dan, here's the phone number of the study director. Call him, and I call him, and he says, hey, Dan, thank you uh, for your interest. How did you get my number? I'm not going to say who I got it from because I don't want her to get in trouble. I will just say my PI uh, was told by a colleague at a conference. I don't know. And then uh, so then they say, okay, well, we don't need sites now. But check back like in six months because if enrollment is behind, maybe we're bringing on add-on sites. It's called add-on sites. So this and is you need to do a lot of follow-up with this. And for Alzheimer's, there is a, a, a lot a good chance that you can get the study uh, as a backup, uh, backup yeah. Uh, site. Yeah. And don't bother with this email from Eli Lilly. It's not going to give you anything about the study. But this is a good study. I would... I would, if you want an Alzheimer's study, look how many people you can contact to network with. And you can find, look, if we have time, look guys, I'm gonna put this also on the Guru channel to show you guys how to, uh, where was uh, Sfera Stein? Let's find her. Florida. Uh, here, here, medical clinic. Okay. Uh, yep. So I'm gonna look for her. If let's say I call and they say, oh, she's busy right now, take a message. I don't have time for this. I'll leave my message, but I don't have time to wait because this never going to call me back. So unless I call every 15 minutes, they will get tired of me calling and give her the <laughs> phone. But if I want to do it more polite, I just go to LinkedIn. Let's see if she's here. Yeah, see, she's here. Beth, uh, and then I could add her as a connection. And say, hey, you no, know, would love to network. Uh, would love to network. I also do Alzheimer study. And then you never know. But if you do this all day, eventually somebody, maybe not Seferstein, but somebody will get back to me. And then I can get a contact for the study, or maybe she has other studies too that I, I'm not seeing here. So that's how you do networking. Uh, if you're a doctor, it's even better because now Dr. Safferstein doesn't want to talk to Dan. You know, they want to talk to Dr. Al better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so that's a good study. Okay, so next study, uh, TRX0237. Why is this one? What do you guys think about this one? Why are you interested in this one? The other one, I see why you're interested because it's an easy study, it looks like. Uh, I thought this one was interested because I was looking to, through many studies and this was probably one of the only ones phase three. Most of the other studies are either phase one or phase two. This was one of the only ones that is phase three and they are looking for 450 patients. So. Ah, yeah. Almost as many as the last one. Mm -hmm. And this one actually started the two years ago, so it's almost over. Well, probably was delayed a lot by COVID. You know, you remember how I said this one, because it hasn't started, the previous one, uh, check back in six months. Well, this one you should be checking now because we had COVID, we had a delay, and let's see how many sites they have. 156 sites. Look at this. Yeah, I think they are adding new sites. Yeah, but yeah. I think they are adding new sites because if you can see, there are some that says not yet recruiting. So and I'm I know thinking... this site. I used to monitor this site here. Mm -hmm. ATP. So yeah, if I oh. wanted to, I can like network with that guy. Hey, what are you doing? Let's uh, give me that study. Uh, these guys are good too. So they have a lot. They have a lot of 
let's see in LA if you know any of these guys. See, these guys only put the company name of the site, not the doctor, not the phone number. So it's a little more secretive. Okay, but you can always Google CI trial and then and, and you find uh, who their PI is. So it's just another step. But yeah, you can contact and I doubt they're going to have the sponsor contact. They even have in other countries. Spain, Poland, uh, TARX Therapeutics. They don't have a contact. But, you, you know, I mean, this is where you start getting into different kind of tools to biz dev. But what do you guys think about the science of this one? It is, uh, and uh, the other name for it is LMTM, and it is a second generation protein aggregation inhibitor of for the treatment of Alzheimer uh, disease and fronto, uh, frontotemporal dementia. It is, so we have Rimapir, uh, as, and this is the second generation of the Rimapir, as, so I think it's, they're trying to find out more specific uh, uh, inhibitor for uh, okay. dementia. That's this one, TRX0237? Yes. This okay. is like a uh, second generation uh, uh, protein uh, aggregation inhibitor for Alzheimer's disease. Oh, yeah. Second generation. Okay. Yep. Uh, is this interesting? Like for an application for Alzheimer's, is it used for other things too? No, I don't think so. I think oh, because okay. it is specific for Alzheimer's because of the protein that is targeted. Oh, okay, okay. Change. Let's see what this one. Let's see what the inclusion is for this. PET scan, MMSC sixteen to twenty-seven. So they they don't want mod, They don't really want a uh, severe Alzheimer. They want mild to moderate. Sixteen. This is the lowest we've seen so far. Uh, so that's uh, probably easier to enroll patients. Uh, significant exclusion. Okay, this is that's the exclusion criteria. So yeah, this one seems straightforward and no CSF, no lumbar puncture look like. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first thing we look for because the I know the patients don't like that. No, nobody likes uh, anyone to poke in his body. Yeah, but especially like a mild, like because this is mild, they're not going to want this. You know, the mild uh, uh -huh. patient, they're not going to want that. And the family won't, won't usually don't want that. Uh, Monica, what's your experience with lumbar puncture? The family usually doesn't like this, right? No. Mm -mm. Yeah, so this was good because this doesn't have that. It has an MRI. I know. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, it has MRI. I think it has MRI yeah. because they want to exclude uh, brain trauma, uh, mm -hmm. you know, traumatic brain injury, I think. Uh, and then the last study, BAN 2401 with Biogen. Oh, sponsor ISI and Biogen. So ISI made Aricept, which is one of the standard of treatment for Alzheimer. I actually worked on the ISI study in 2006. My first Alzheimer's study I worked on. This one, they want 1,500, 1,600 participants. That's why I choose this study <laughs> for the amount yeah. of patients that we're looking for. And they just started last year, probably got significantly impacted by COVID with their delays. They, let's go straight to the... Yeah, they mentioned in page uh, uh, three uh, that extension phase number, number of the participants with adverse event that clinically significant changes. That's why. So. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, this. So basically, I wouldn't have... call this. Yeah, uh, banner. Yeah, they have. They're also masking the numbers, but you know, you can just find. So uh, I would network if with one of those sites. Let's see what the primary outcome. What's this drug about, uh, Doctor L? Ban twenty four oh one. What is this thing? I'm trying to find out. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. It, apparently, this is amazing. You just Google that random number, and it tells you exactly what you mean. Yeah. Immunotherapy. 
Another monoclonal therapy, antibody. Uh, yeah. Another monoclonal antibody. I think uh, these monoclonal antibodies of uh, immunoglobulin uh, have been having some success, and uh, that's why a lot of company is making up this new medication. Right, yeah, because the, I guess the beta amyloid, you know, they tried that like last decade. It didn't work, so now they're trying. This is the second time we're seeing this uh, monoclonal antibody. I think there's something with the tau, tau receptor. Uh, is like the new thing they're looking at with Alzheimer's. So this is a. Let me go back to the study. This would be a good one too if you can get it. The sponsor is ISI. So this is a like this. These two sponsors, okay. If you are a psychiatrist and you uh treat patients, obviously in your office, okay, you're gonna have sales rep coming in, bringing you sandwiches. Uh, incur. I mean, Doctor Al, how many sales rep come visit you every day? Probably what? One or bunch, two. Right? Yeah. One or two every day, like, and they bring yeah. sandwich, coffee. What do they bring? Like, a no, actually, uh, these days there is not a lot of things. Like, maybe they ask to see me and 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 uh, get uh, just like about a new product or update on their product. And then okay. the, the days of the sandwiches and the gifts and like this are uh, almost over, especially in the COVID. Even like but lately, uh, I've yeah. been doing these kind of. Uh, on the phone through Zoom. Yesterday I, I met with the BMS in regard oh, of the wow. new, yeah. Through the Zoom? New... Who wants to meet with a rep through Zoom? You can't bring you coffee. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. But look, I know, but, the but, 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 but they have the insight about the new uh, new treatment and uh, yeah. it's like very helpful and they can provide you with the more information and slides and like this that can... So here's something actually, Dr. Al, so I don't even think I told you this, but like when these sponsors come, like these big sponsors, but for example, this, let's say iSci or Biogen rep come and talks to you on Zoom or maybe in person and you tell them, hey, I wanna t uh, I'm interested in this study. I want to talk to your medical liaison, okay? Then the medical liaison is like the bridge between the sales and R&D and they're the ones that actually will pre-qualify you for a study. And so they'll they'll send their people from the staff, and then if they like you, they give it to the CRO and say, "Hey, go activate Dr. Al for this study." I know, but I've been doing it through the medical liaison and have not been having any success. Actually, I've been Has having more kept? success. No, I've been having more success through your academy guys than through the medical <laughs> liaison. No, I'm not joking. I'm well, not of joking. course, of no. course, that's gonna work better. But yeah, I mean, you know, the liaisons can work too, no? No. No, they, 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 because they don't have, they do not have like this much power. They, they will submit the, your name, and after submitting your name, they have no, no power. Yeah, they like you. They like them. You're yeah. nice guys. They're nice people. <laughs> okay, and that's the extent of it. They cannot like, uh, they don't have the power to to push your site to be approved or not approved to a CRO. Okay. Do you as a CRO, and you have your connection directly to the company where they can list yeah. your site okay mm -hmm. and, and as i told you i've been having like more success with you uh, getting a medical trial clinical trial than getting it to the medical zone completely that's amazing i'm gonna edit that part of the video and put it as a commercial on youtube <laughs> i'm not joking do it i do it if, if you want, i can I've we can go to Eileen and do more of like production about that. Oh, I like it. The Clinical Scoop magazine, guys, it's coming out. You got to go to clinicalscoop.com. We also have the Clinical Research Circle with Monica and Dr. Al, where we help doctors set up sites. You know, right now we're working in Southern California, but eventually we will hopefully expand outside. But uh, even if you're outside, what do we do with the ones outside of California? We Ooh. give them to DSCS. That's, uh, we help them. We help them. So, we help. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We, you know, look, look how many sites in California for this one. Okay, we got 
Fullerton, Irvine, Ooh. LA, Oxnard, Palo Alto, San Diego, San Diego, San Francisco, Santa Ana. I know this site. Uh, I monitored there. St. Joseph and the uh, or Santa Rosa and Sebastopol. I don't even know where this is. <laughs> I know. That's California. So right. Yeah, right. I know, but I don't know where. <laughs> We're going to have to Google and see. We're learning everything on the clinical school. <laughs> Where's Wikipedia? 1902 Incorporated. Must be in Northern California somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Not even north. that north. Just a little bit north of San Francisco. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, I mean, let's stop sharing the screen. So that's it, guys. I mean, four studies. We picked Alzheimer's today. We've been doing a lot of COVID. Uh... I want to eventually talk about some of these studies that we've been talking about. If we do this long enough, we could talk about the results. But if we can find results too of uh, other studies and discuss the results because I think the results are equally interesting. Uh, obviously, it doesn't help you if you're trying to do research. It's more exciting to talk about the new studies, but I think the results are good too sometimes. What do you guys think? You like this idea? Uh, yeah, of course. I would love to, especially this Alzheimer's study. I mean, that will be uh, amazing. You think Beth Saphir Stein will reply back to me? <laughs> yeah, you know, why she <laughs> shouldn't? You, know? <laughs> you, you, uh, tell no. us next, you tell us next week then. <laughs> yeah, I'll, oh, yeah. good. I'll follow up <laughs> next, next week. Hey, we'll her, next week, we'll have her on the show. We'll have yes. her on the show. <laughs> for sure, she's gonna reply for uh, to you now. <laughs> yeah, now I'm gonna show her the video. Hey, let's. Yeah. The game. We gotta get you on the show now. We made you famous. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good stuff, guys. I mean, yeah, you know, it's a pleasure doing these scoops. Anything else we're missing? What do you get? What's the commercial you have, Monica, for Circle? You're probably better sure. with that than me. For Clinical Research Circle and for the so, scoop, we already told them, go go to clinicalscoop.com, register your site profile if you're a site. If you're a sponsor, register your sponsor profile. Uh, look out for the Clinical Scoop magazine. And now Monica for the circle, Clinical Research Circle, uh, where we help investigators. What's the commercial? We have a call with one in 15 minutes. Yeah, we actually yep. have it all. I mean, we have from A to C, 360 degrees services. So anything you need, uh, even we even train you, the principal investigator and your staff. So okay. we have the whole service. Good. Well, Dr. Al, thank you very much. Uh, you what do you think about these? What do you think about these scoop of things? You think they're good? I think it's excellent. I think it's, it's a way of to introduce research for the community and to a physician community and try to help them in starting their own uh, work there. Yeah, let's see. Let's see uh, what kind of traction we. I, I, we just the started then. We have not been like three months yet in the market. Okay, no, yeah, so not even really. That. Yeah. Yeah, it's so August, just give so... it time. You, 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 you're in the hay. You want to do a team, 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 team. No, no, relax that. Relax. We, we do it little by little. We'll get the podcasts going. We're on podcast too. So if you're on YouTube, just look for Clinical Scoop on your favorite podcast, and we're there if you want to listen. But then you miss out on some of the screen, screen share I show with the, the clinicaltrials.gov. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Raul. Thank yep. you, Monica. Thank you, Dr. Al. And we'll catch y'all later, guys. Bye-bye. 15 minutes. Bye-bye. <laughs>